So, is Go worth the hype? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Let's get into it. All right, what is going on, guys? Today, I want to talk about Go. I started using Go a little over a year ago. This was back when I had this project. I wasn't sure exactly what it would be. At the time, it was Market Zero, and today, you might know it as Insider Biz. So, at that point, I was trying to figure out a good language to use to sort of handle my backend form parsing, to handle tons of data aggregations, a lot of, a lot of really complicated stuff. Well, not complicated, but a lot of very heavy compute stuff. And I really needed a more performance-oriented language. One of the first versions of Insider Viz, or I guess at the time Market Zero, was built with TypeScript. And I've actually built this with TypeScript several times. And it works well in a lot of ways, but it does run into some performance bottlenecks. So that sort of drove me towards Go. And as I started learning Go, it has very rapidly become my favorite language. I think Go at this point, all things considered, is my favorite language. TypeScript is great. Python is great. You know, these work well. But I think overall, if I had to pick one, it would be Go. And today I want to break down why, I want to give you a couple examples and really just make the case for why I think Go is absolutely worth your time going into the future. I think it has a bright, bright future. And I think that in the future, backends, CLI apps, it's all going to be Go. And I think it's worth learning. Real quick, before I get into that, make sure you are subscribed if you're interested in Go, TypeScript, startups, front-end development, back-end development, CSS, style, whatever it is. I'm going to be trying to cover it all throughout 23 and beyond. Got a lot of very ambitious stuff coming, so make sure you are joining up for that without further ado let's talk about go one of the first things i want to talk about is the learning curve this is something that is cannot be understated enough and it is how easy go is to learn go took me like a week to get to a point where i was comfortable shipping production code there is code in the current insider viz code base that is from like a year ago on like the first week of me learning go i wrote some of this core code that i'm still using in our form parser and our xml parsing and all that stuff i wrote it like in the first three days of using the language. It is so easy to use. It is so intuitive. If you've ever used a C-like language, if you've ever used Java, C-sharp, hell, even TypeScript or Python or anything like this, it's going to make a lot of sense to you. Obviously, it has pointers and stuff, but they're not pointers in the oppressive sense of like C. They're pretty easy. They're basically just passing by reference and passing by value. Not that hard to deal with. And the amount of performance gain you get for the simplicity is absurd. Like Rust is, yes, it is faster than Go. A fully optimized Rust app is going to run faster than a Go app, but the difference is not that insane. And the difference in time to get it to actually work is monumental. I really like Rust on paper, but I highly doubt I will ever actually learn it. And I'm going to make a video on that later. But for me, Go is way more productive. And all I really care about is at the end of the day, solving the business problem. And Go does that beautifully. It solves the problem of a high performance backend, really, really great language all around. So as I've been touching on briefly, Go's performance is incredible. It is hard to describe, but it's just so fast and efficient. Let me show you something real quick to sort of give you an idea of how crazy this actually is. So what you're looking at right here is I host the backends for Insider Viz on Railway. It's a great platform, really easy to use, makes my life super easy. I'll definitely have a Go deployment video in the future, but the answer, if you want to quickly, is just use Railway. It's great, works super well for it. And I have a ton of different um, golang apis up and hosted on railway three of these are for insider viz and if you look at their accrued costs it's basically nothing and i know you could just say well you know you don't have any users but we do we had uh, like a huge number of users i'm not going to disclose the actual number but it was in the tens of thousands range so we had in the range of tens of thousands and this was our server cost it's basically nothing. Go is so efficient, so strong. Hundreds of requests a minute, it doesn't care. It's well optimized, it's super fast, and obviously, you know, on my end, I did architect the whole thing intelligently, so we do a lot of caching, we do a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things that we put into it that optimize this to keep these costs down, but this is crazy. If this was in TypeScript, this would be quintuple this, probably more. It's insane how efficient in it's insane how efficient and fast and just I, I know I've said it before, but it's just so easy. This wasn't too hard to do and it's perfect. And I'm on the developer plane, so I'm not actually even paying anything for this. It's crazy. Absolutely insane. Obviously, we will as we scale more. But for now, for this opening, 
no issues. So getting back into more of Go itself and less of the sort of abstract, one of the things that I've found that's really great about Go is the package system. This is something that you're going to run into very quickly if you start writing any project outside of a Hello World app. And the package system is great. It's super easy to work with and it makes a lot of intuitive sense. I know way back when it used to be a lot worse, but whatever they've landed on now, the sort of system of just declaring like a directory is package whatever, and then you can import that and all of that stuff, it just works really nicely and I really like how it works. I know it has its issues, but for me, it's fine. And the whole thing is just intuitive and the editor support is crazy, but I'm gonna to touch more on that later. A video, so a video about Go would not be complete without praising the concurrency. And this is really the thing that pushed it over the edge. And the reason why I think it's my favorite language is because of the concurrency. I know I've harped on this a lot, but it is just so insane what you can do so easily. Concurrency is not hard to do in Go. Like, let's go ahead and just run a really quick concurrency example. Okay, so right here, you are looking at a very basic example of concurrency in Go. I'm gonna have more detailed breakdowns of these in the future, but the sort of idea here is I am going to be concurrently printing out the sum of squares here using channels. So what I'm doing right here is I'm spinning up two Go routines. So I make a channel of an int, which is basically a way to pass things back and forth. I run Go print numbers and Go print squares. So then this in this print numbers function, this is going to be our effectively our producer. This is a producer consumer type problem. So we have this right up here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna iterate from zero to less than 10. It's gonna go ahead and it's gonna put into this channel an integer I. So we're gonna put all these numbers in. And then at the end of this, we're gonna close C. So then what we're doing down here within this print squares, this is our sort of consumer. And in here, we're just gonna keep, we're gonna have an infinite loop where what we do is we just take in I and more. So every time something comes out of C, it's gonna pull out here. It's gonna say, okay, we have our integer I, which is our value. We have more, which is our um, flag of whether or not there's more coming out. When we close it, this will be set to false. So if we go ahead, we say, okay, there is more, great, then we have an I value. We're gonna go ahead and fmt.println, I times I. We can go ahead and break this when we don't have anything left. And then we can just print all that stuff out. So you can see the output down here, super simple. And obviously this is not a practical example. You wouldn't, you don't need to use concurrency to print out the first 10 squares, but imagine you need to do 15 different API requests all at once, or you need to do some heavy computation where you need to be um, interleaving and concurrency is super useful. This is so easy. I've used concurrency and parallelism and all this stuff in other languages, in C and Java and Python, and it sucks in those languages. I know obviously plenty of people know how to do it well, and that's great, but for me, I just Go has the most intuitive way of doing it, and for my use case, which is heavy data aggregation, this is invaluable. I absolutely love the concurrency in Go. So the sort of last two things I wanna kinda of touch on to just give you this brief overview of Go is gonna be the deployment and editor support. Obviously, deploying Go is very easy, especially when you're using a managed platform like Railway or DigitalOcean or something like this. Personally, I prefer Railway, as I mentioned earlier. I'll have a video breaking this down later. It's, um, I mean, if you want a little preview, just click the deploy button and it works. It's really that simple. Um, so deploying it is super easy. It makes a lot of sense. You can just run go build and then you get an executable. That executable can be run anywhere. Dockerizing a go app is pretty easy and very straightforward. Certainly more uh, straightforward and easy than dealing with node modules and bundlers and all this stuff in the TypeScript world. I do not even cannot even begin to understand ES build and lint and not linting. I know what linting is, but ES build and all this crazy stuff. I, <laughs> I have no idea. At some point I really do need to, but for now, beats me, but go. Very easy to do, no issue. And then finally, editor support. I use VS Code. I know that there are gonna be some NeoVim purists out there, I get it. I have tried to use it multiple times, but at the end of the day, there are just so many comforts in VS Code and there are just so many things that make my life so much easier. Copilot integration is great. The Go extension is actually phenomenal. I think that of all of the languages I've used, um, Go has by far the best built-in support in VS Code. The Go extension is crazy good. It is super quick, it is super easy to use. And if I go ahead and it does like all your imports for you on save, so if I go ahead and delete this time, and then let's screw up some formatting in here and let's just add some random lines. And then as soon as I hit save, it just formats it for me. So I can delete this line and it's right exactly how you would want it. And it just does all that for me. It's got great um, definitions, it's got great linting. Everything works super well. So VS Code's integration is great. Go is great. And yeah, so hopefully that gives you a sort of idea of where I come from on this. 
I have about a year of experience with this and I have deployed apps with it and I can very confidently say it's a great language. I'm going to be using it a ton more. There's a lot of, I think, there's a lot of things I didn't even cover here. I didn't touch on database integration. I didn't touch on asynchronous stuff. I didn't touch on parallelism. There's a lot of stuff you can do with Go that I didn't even mention here, but it's a great language. I highly recommend it. I think it has a very, very bright future. It's been growing. Um, want to really see that happen and I want to be a part of that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Learn something. Let me know. Have a great day.